something you were never created to be in the first place you were not created for you you were created for him you were never created for you God didn't say let me put them there for them he placed you here to represent him 
born again, refathered, brand new dad, the best dad ever. Doesn't matter how you grew up, what matters is that you have an encounter with your father. Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus, God, for what you want to do. I thank you for great grace, God. I thank you for lives transformed. God, I thank you that people have come in here that they won't leave here the same. I thank you that they will live with more conviction. More conviction. I thank you that real grace, that empowers real truth to happen. I thank you that people would have even more of a hunger for your word. Even more of a hunger for the truth, God. Even more of a hunger. God, that we can't be so led by the Spirit that we avoid the truth. And we can't be pressing into the truth without the Spirit. But God, there would be such a move of God on this planet. There will be Spirit and truth because the Spirit of truth is here. And Holy Spirit, you're the best teacher ever. Father, I thank you for great grace, God. Mercy. I thank you for the power of the gospel. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Oh, amazing. I love you. 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 I say that because he loves me. 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 For those of you that never heard me before, how many of you have never heard me? Come on, there's some still there in the world, man. I am so thankful. First of all, I want to just give honor to the Hagans and just thank you. Uh, thank you. I know. I just, you know, when I was, I, it's hard to believe it's been three years. It's crazy. I really love you guys. I honor you and thank you for what you're doing in the world, all over the world and crazy. More than 200, 200 schools, 223, 225 schools. Can't even keep track. It's awesome. 52 nations. She Crazy. That's a lot. More than I, when I was here last time, way more already. Wow. Well, thank you so much for letting me, let me come back and really appreciate you. And just thank you. I hope I can help. I hope I can add to everything that's happening. And I'm just so thankful to be alive every day. I'm just, I'm just grateful. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm three years older than when I was last time. I was nine when I came here before. Now I'm 12. It's really awesome. Um, my, my girl that was 16 is now 19. My girl that was seven is now 10. And my girl that was two is now five. And they're possessed. <laughs> they really are possessed. I mean, like crazy. Like, really. And then my wife and I, we just adopted, uh, we're in the process of adopting on Father's Day, our, we, a little boy was born. His name's Azariah, um, down in West Virginia. And he was born to a mom that was addicted to heroin for 20 years and uh, trying to you know, come off and be free. They, they designed a, they came up with a drug called methadone, which actually isn't a drug that they want you to be free from. It's actually something that people are hooked for life on. So you come off of heroin, which is illegal. You go on methadone, which is legal, but they never tell you to wean down. They keep you on it forever. And so it's an epidemic. It's way more than anybody knows. And methadone is something that, <clears throat> it's a drug, man. I don't care what you want to call it. Needs you need to be free from it. And so our baby was born on Father's Day. They brought him from mom and brought him right over to us. And in 72 hours, he's shaking and tremoring and, doing all those things, a baby man. And I was a drug addict, for those of you, there's lots of you that know my testimony, I shared it last time I was here. It's actually the most viewed YouTube video that we have, was here. And uh, last time I was here, I was 
I was a part of a ministry called Neck Ministries. And, and <clears throat> when I came here a couple weeks later, Dan and I had a conversation and Dan said, Todd, it's time for you to launch out. And there was a guy here that was helping with, just so many things changed. So many things, changed, but it happened here. And so two weeks later, <clears throat> Dan said, you know, it's time for you to launch out and have your own ministry. And I'm like, okay, well, God didn't tell me that. <clears throat> But there was a fellow here um, that actually said, God told me I'm supposed to help you with a website. And I'm like, well, he didn't tell me that. Actually came up to me here. And I said, well, he didn't tell me that, man. Thank you so much for your help. This is before Dan told me. And I said, thanks, man. Here's, here's my number. You're gonna, he's gonna talk to you. I'm like, man, I, I don't think so, but thanks. And then your wife said, you need to listen to him. And I went, oh my gosh. Yes, Miss Lynette, thank you. <laughs> and then Dan said, and I'm like, Hey, dude, uh, remember when God told you? Uh, I think you were right. And I was wrong. <clears throat> and so January 1st, we launched Lifestyle Christianity, but it was right after I was here. So this was like a birthing place for me. And so like crazy, awesome, really. I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one in this room that would ever say that. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people where this is the birthing ground. You guys are like an incubator. It's awesome. I do, I want to share a whole bunch of stuff with you. You know, I think it's, I think it's your fault, Craig, that last night, no, seriously, last night, um, I'm, I try to go to bed. At, it's like one o'clock. Now, I just came back from Europe, but I've been back for about five days. It takes you a little bit to get off of jet lag. Last time I was here, I was so jet lagged. I was South African jet lagged. It was not good. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm trying to get to sleep and it's like one in the morning and I'm like, I talked to my my wife and she's like, honey, I'm trying to go to bed. I have to feed the baby. I said, well, next, when's the next feeding time? Because every two and a half hours, the baby eats. She goes, one o'clock. I said, well, it's good. I called you right now because you only have 15 minutes until it's feeding time. <laughs> so we talked for a little bit and, and then I went to go to sleep and this scripture hit me and kept me up all night long. And I know it's your fault. It's have faith in God. <laughs> it is, isn't it? That's you. Did you sick that thing on me the other night? No, but it is. It's right there where Jesus cursed the fig tree and the disciples are like, how'd this happen? He says, have faith in God for any mountain you speak to will be removed. And he's, but it's just that little bit. And then Jesus said, have faith in God. And then I'm like, okay, help me. And all night long, have faith in God. I'm like, okay, yes, God, I love you so much. I have faith in you, Lord, you're amazing. Go try to go to sleep. Have faith in God. I'm like, okay, God, I do. I love you. I need to sleep because I, I got to speak in the morning. Have faith in God. Yes, Lord. All night long, have faith in God. So I'm growing in the revelation of having faith in God. I mean, I talked this morning about having faith in your faith, and that's not right. You need to have faith in God because God's the reason that you even have faith to begin with. And it's a big deal. But I, I'm in a place of hungering because I need to see more. You know, I'm, like I get to see a lot, but it's not... It's not nearly enough. I, I, I need more. Like, and people say, well, you have God. I, no, no, no. You don't understand. I'm not seeing what the Bible says I need to see. But I'm seeing more than I ever have. So I'm not, it's not an unthankful place. It's thankful, but not, not satisfied. I am content. I am thankful and I'm content. I am so thankful that God has created me. I'm so thankful that I'm his son. I'm so thankful that he's my father. I'm thankful because I get a glass of water. Like, I'm thankful. I just live with a thankful heart. But I'm not satisfied. No, I'm not. Like, I was reading a book and someone had, had suggested a while back, it was a man you might have heard of, named T.L. Osborne. You might have heard of him before. I think that's your fault too, Craig, because you sent me a picture of T.L. Osborne a couple years ago and said, when he had passed, and said, a great man. And here's him with my grandpa and, oh my gosh. But I read the book and I'm like, oh my gosh, am I even saved? God, <laughs> are you kidding me? Like they, a whole blind school left, healed. A whole deaf school. Like, like what is that? That's faith, having faith in God. But that same Holy Spirit, because they would tell you that they didn't heal anybody. That it was God through them that healed them. The disciples didn't heal anybody. It was the Holy Spirit in them. Jesus 
even said, I can do nothing of myself, but what I do, I do because the Father does it. For what the Father does, the Son does in like manner. I've so limited myself that I can't do anything in my own strength. It's the Father who dwells in me that does the works. If you don't believe in me through the things that I say, at least believe in me through the things that I do. For it's the Father that dwells in me that does the works. I need a deeper revelation. I need a, a, a more amazing encounter with Him. Every day. I'm crying out. Every day. Like, and I see a whole lot. I love being on a plane and watching the plane just get Jesus. I love going into a grocery store and watching people that shop there get Jesus. I love going into a drugstore and watching the drugstore get Jesus. I love being in the dentist's office with gauze in my mouth and blood all around my mouth going out to my car after people just got wrecked in the dentist's office. I go out to my car and say, man, why were they staring at me? I look, I got blood ring all around my mouth because I... I love the fact that it doesn't matter what I'm going through, it doesn't matter where I'm at, I'm going to share the gospel. I'm going to share Jesus everywhere. I love that I have found out that it's not just for pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers. I am really, really thankful that the Bible says these signs will follow them that believe. That means that if you're a believer, you're in, it's you, it's yours. You are the only one that limits you because God did not limit you. God has given us everything according to life and godliness. So that means that I have to press into him. I need to jump in with everything I am. I can't afford to hold back for such time as this. Who knows that you, just like, just like Esther was told by Mordecai, hey, who knows that for such a time as this, it's the reason why you're there. Don't think you're going to escape. Because you're there for such a time as this. That's who you are at your workplace. That's who you are at your school. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter where you're at. No one limits you. Take the chains off of our Father. The Bible is true. The Bible is true. The Word of God is true. I remember when I first started praying for people. And man, I, I just saw somebody get healed. And I was so excited. I'm like, man, I, God wants to heal people. And He wants to use... Do I have to stay behind that line? God wants to heal people. You have no idea. I stand in boxes a lot sometimes. And, I, uh, and the worst nightmare for me is having a cord, cord hooked up to a mic. It's like a chain. But sometimes because of the video, you can't go certain places. Oh, I'm freedom. <laughs> but, I, but I saw somebody get healed at a, at a church. And I was so amazed. I mean, I, I didn't see him get healed. I just saw him get prayer. And, and they had leukemia. And I, I watched him come up to the guy that, Dan, this pastor that had a healing service. And he said, listen, we're very skeptical of this. But honestly, we're out of options. That's what the guy said to Dan. He's like, we don't have any other choice. Like the doctor said, we're, I'm, I'm going to die. The wife said, and the doctor's diagnosed my husband. He's got one of 50 cases I've ever known this strain of leukemia, and it's killed everyone, 49 other people. I'm the 50th case. The doctors have sent me home to die. And we're very skeptical of this because honestly, we've grown up in church and we don't believe in this whole healing thing. But we're out of options. And said to Dan, We're we're out of options. It's not going to matter. And Dan says, Absolutely not. And I went, What was that? That was faith. I just didn't ever see it like that before. And I'm brand new. I'm like, <sighs> I'm a brand new Christian. I'm a brand new Christian. I've been set free from 22 years of addiction. Like all of that stuff. I shared my testimony before here with my girl for nine years and then I get saved. Radical encounter with Jesus after I get shot at. God speaks to me audibly. I took those bullets for you. Are you ready to live for me yet? I come home, I go to Teen Challenge for two months, have a radical encounter with Jesus. I come home and realize that there's no way that I can move back into that house again. Because I can't. So convicted, like my house is full of pornography, all that junk. And God convicts me, go through the house, get all your junk and take it out to the barrel and burn it. I did. And all of my past went into that barrel. Like everything. All my junk, all my trash, pornography, drug addiction, everything. Like I wasn't addicted to drugs when I went to that barrel. But all my bongs, my bowls, my paraphernalia, all the junk that used to rule my life, pornography that used to rule my life, ended that day. Ended that day. It was amazing. And then we got married a couple days later in between first and second service. So now my amazing wife is my best friend in the whole world. Best friend. Best friend ever. 21 years this year we've been together. Nine really, really bad ones. 
12 amazing years because they've been in Christ. 12 years have been amazing. Uh, they say, well, what, what about your honeymoon? We never had one. Every day is one. I, I love my wife. It's like amazing. So I saw this healing thing and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to go after this. Like, this is so crazy. Like, that, what is that? He says, and he prays for him. The guy didn't go, whoa, shake, fall, nothing. He just looked at him. And, Amen. Prayed for him. The guy goes, is that it? Dan goes, absolutely. Here's my number. Call me. That's the same thing Dan said to me. Here's my number. Call me. You're going to need it. I'm like, whatever, dude. I don't need your number. And then five and a half months, he's the only one that will talk to me. And I get shot at. And then he's like, hey, so I know what that means. You're going to need to call him. But it was to verify, you know, what happened. So two weeks later, this phone call comes in. This guy with leukemia is completely healed. And I, I sat there and I went, oh my gosh, I'm going to pray for everybody. This is crazy. This is crazy. I'm praying for everyone. And they're, okay, all right, awesome. I told Dan, he goes, good for you. I said, if God's healing people in here, why wouldn't he do it out there? I didn't have any models. I didn't have people everywhere praying for people. I just said, well, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pray for everybody. Dan's like, all right, praise God. I'm like, okay. Well, my wife wasn't on the praise God thing. We're brand new. We're married. But she's not excited about me praying for anybody. Matter of fact, she's totally embarrassed. So we're in Walmart. My little kid's in there with me. My little Destiny, who's seven and a half at the time. I see a lady with a walker walking like this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, let's, I'm going to pray for her. My wife's pushing the shopping cart. And my daughter and I are behind. We veered off left and went over there. She goes, Daddy, what's going on? I said, we're going to pray for her because God wants her to be made whole. She goes, what does made whole mean? Because my daughter has no clue. Like, she's never been like, this. not church isn't a part of the equation except brand new now. She wasn't with me at the healing service. You can never allow what people haven't seen to determine what you need to see. Never ever allow something that people say shouldn't happen to determine what you need to see happen. Never allow what people don't see to influence what you need to see. And so I'm like, I'm going to pray for this lady. So I asked her, I said, can my daughter and I pray for you? She goes, here? I said, yeah, the worst thing can happen is nothing. <laughs> that's the truth. Like, that's the worst that can happen. And the worst she can say is no. No and nothing. What do you got to lose? Like, are you sold out? You've been purchased with a price. You ought to like sell out to that. It wasn't just silver or gold. You weren't redeemed with silver and gold. You were, you were redeemed with the precious, the precious blood of God. Jesus paid a price for you. Paid with his flesh and blood. Paid with the price of his life. The cost that heaven paid determines your value. You have to know how valuable you are. You can't allow anything in life to determine your value. You can't allow whether your parents wanted you or not to determine your value. Who cares whether your mom and dad wanted you or not? They didn't know who they were if they didn't value your life. If a parent has you and they don't know who they are, how can you allow somebody's identity that doesn't know who they are to determine your value? Whether they wanted you or not, all life comes from God. Well, you don't understand, my mom rejected me. So what? I mean, I'm, um, I'm not going to sit there and pity you. Uh, lots of moms don't know who they are and they have babies. Man, we just adopted this baby that was born to a woman that didn't want to get pregnant but she did and then he's here and like what are you going to do with that I'll redeem that life is what I'm going to do redeem it and show the value of that child and show him who he really is and teach him who his daddy is because when you find out who your daddy is he changes everything if you think that your natural dad is all that you have you're wrong your natural dad can be the most amazing dad ever most amazing dad but that's not where your value comes from. He can value you as much as he wants. But if your value doesn't come from heaven, you're still not valuable enough. It's a big deal. I don't know if I shared it last time when I was here, but I'm going to share it this time. I might have. Did I share the whole, like, how many chances it was for you? Let me just share it real quick. Because it's really good. I love this. I want to talk about childbirth for a minute. So we can understand the value of life. When I was born, there are 80 million chances of me going up a birth canal. 80 million. What's up, buddy? Transform. 80 million chances of me going up a birth canal headed for the egg. 
Can you see me? 80 million chances trying to get in the egg. Natural instinct, everybody. Every man for themselves. Jackhammers, sledgehammers, saws, doesn't matter, man. Everybody's trying to fight for their way in there. Why? Because natural instinct says, get there. That's their only mission. Millions of people on a mission. And everybody gets there and they're trying to get in and then I'm the last one. I'm slow. I'm, behind. I'm the last one. Because the last will be first. And so I'm at the back end of this whole crowd. And when I get there, they part like the Red Sea. Wouldn't that be amazing? What if it really happened like that? It did. And then without a tool, without a jackhammer, without anything, without a sledgehammer, I just bloop, right in, boom, inside, whoa. Who let them by? How'd they get through? And a voice, my voice from inside, because I don't know this world. I have no idea what the world's like. I don't. All I know is my father. See, we don't teach this sometimes, but this is the truth. See, you, see, inside of that egg, my voice says, because I don't know the world. I have no idea about the re rejection of, of life or any of that stuff. No, I haven't been let down. I haven't put my trust in stuff other than God. I haven't been let down. I haven't been hurt. I haven't been violated. I haven't been offended. I've just been born. Not yet, but kind of. From inside the egg, my voice says, Sorry guys, I was predestined before the foundation of the world. And that's the truth of a life that has never known the world. But then once you come into the world, all of a sudden your mind gets messed up. And you become the way that seems right to a man. Whether you grow up in church or not. Nobody, nobody can establish relationship with God for you. My kids are on their own when it comes to their relationship. I can guide them, but they have to want God. They have to press in. And the best way for a child to want God is for them to see their parent really love God. Not just part-time, full-time. Like all the time. Love God. It's the best for a parent to not be a hypocrite. It's the best way to love God. But still, you got kids, even if a parent's not a hypocrite, they, they veer off to the left or to the right because they never press in for themselves. And then they might blame that. I meet people all the time. They might blame that on their dad or blame that on their mom. But nobody's responsible for your life but your own. You're responsible for it. Really. Are you guys with me? Powerful and exciting. So I'm, I'm learning all this. I'm a brand new Christian. I see somebody get healed. I'm, I'm praying for everybody. I see this lady. We walk over to ask her to pray. She goes, she goes, oh, well, right here. We're like, yeah, the worst thing that happened is nothing. She goes, okay. So we prayed for her and nothing happened. I didn't get hurt. I didn't say, well, now you made God look bad. Who do you think you are? You can't make God look bad, buddy. God is good. Hypocrisy can damage, but God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. All good things, all good gifts come from the Father of lights. Guess who, light, guess who the lights are that he's the Father of? We say, well, moon and stars. No, you are the light of the world. He's the Father of lights. Come on, let your light so shine that they might glorify your Father in heaven. What does it look like to let your light so shine? It's not this little light of mine. That's not good. It's catchy, but it's not true. Because I'm not a little light. You're not a little light. You are the light of the, the city on a, a light that lights up his own. See, we better get that one. You better light your house up. What are we doing? How can you light up the world if you can't light up your own house? The only reason you couldn't light up your house is if you have a basket on your head. Because you're allowing the things around you to determine the Christ within you. You're allowing the squeeze to determine what you can manifest. The squeeze is supposed to be necessary if need be. Should we go into 1 Peter? This is awesome. It's exciting to me. We're going to actually, I think, in a little bit. So, so 
so we pray for this lady. She walks on. My daughter looks at me. She goes, Dad, this is so weird. Why are we doing this? I said, because God wants us to pray for the sick. Now, my daughter didn't read that. I'm her dad. And we went, found another one, down another aisle. And before you know it, we, we lost my wife. I, we don't know where she is. We found her an hour and a half later in the car. What do you think you're doing? Honey, we're just praying for what? What what are you what? She didn't read that part. That's not part of the Bible she was reading. She didn't read these signs will follow them that believe. She doesn't know I'm a believer. I'm a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. She didn't read that part. But she knows that I'm a brand new creation because I went to get a job. So she was excited about that because I'm going to get a job. I never worked before. So I'm like, yes, I'm going to do my job as under the Lord and not for people. Like literally, when I went and got my job, I told him that. I'm not working for you. I'm working for Jesus. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> okay. Right. We're not religious. Me neither, man. I knew enough to tell him I'm not religious either. <laughs> it was exciting. So I said, you know what? I'm going to pray for as many people as I can. I'm going to pray for 10 people every day. I just... So I said, and I called Dan. I said, dude, I'm going to pray for 10 people every day. I said, I already prayed for seven at Walmart today. He's like, all right. I said, I still got three more to pray for. And my wife was so mad when I got in the car. She goes, who do you think you are? I said, just a Christian, just a believer. Whoa, you are not a pastor. You are not going to do this to me. No, 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 I wasn't doing this to you. Yes, you were. You could care about nobody but yourself. The only reason she's saying that is because I'm an embarrassment. Because I'm pretty bold and I lived for the devil my whole life and now I realize God loves me, I'm just going to run. And so my wife said to me, if this keeps up, I will not go out of the house with you again. I said, why would you do that? I just, okay. I was quiet. On the way home, I cried. Not because she hurt me, but because I was hurting for her. Because she needed to see what I saw. But I wasn't seeing anything like healing wise and I'm praying for all these people but not seeing anything so the next day goes I'm like alright so I'm at work praying for people they think I'm a lunatic actually crazy off my rocker man done <laughs> gone and within a week and a half later my wife says listen if you do this one more time I will not go in public with you I said but why would you do that like God loves no, I don't want to hear any more okay no more be quiet Do you understand that in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.12, do you know what it says? For all of those who desire to talk godly will suffer persecution. That's not what it says. There's a lot of people that are talking a lot of things. But it says for all of those who desire to live godly will suffer persecution. Why? Because godliness brings on every, all hell breaks loose when you start to live godly. Talking godly, quoting stuff, but not walking it out, that's not godly at all. Walking stuff out that you quote and actually becoming the very word that you say you know, that will be godly. Being not conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove God's will, not talk about God's will, but actually prove it everywhere you go. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove. And that word prove means approve. What is and what is not God's will. You are required as a believer to know the will of the Lord. Do not be unwise, but know the will of the Lord. That's what the Bible teaches. It really does. It doesn't teach you're supposed to question it. It says you're supposed to know it. How can you know it if you just read about it in theory? You can't read about it in theory without application. It's called reading the word and walking it out. Don't be just a hearer. But be a hearer and a doer. For he who hears and does not do is like a guy that looks in the mirror and walks away and forgets who he was. Wait a minute, who was I again? But the Bible says that we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into what? Into the original image that God created us to be in the beginning as if we never ate the tree. God wants you to see yourself the way that he sees you. But if you don't walk out the word that you say you know, You're a hearer and not a doer. And you'll forget who you are. You'll walk away. Don't be that way. Hear and do. 
So now I'm reading in the Word, and I'm seeing Dan's life, and I'm seeing more miracles, and I'm like, oh my gosh, not from me, but from him. At healing services, man, my knee is better. You're kidding me, dude. Seriously, what couldn't you do? This is nuts. You gotta be kidding. So it's what it's doing. It's it's enticing me, not just for me to go. Wow, I went to a healing service. It was awesome. I'm like, I gotta get this in me, and I've gotta walk this out. Because if this is for believers, and all I saw was Mark 16, these signs will follow them that believe. Guess what the first sign of a believer is? You're going to cast out devils. A lot of the church is afraid of devils. Why would you be afraid of something that's supposed to leave? I'm not kidding. There's no devil in hell that can crowd Jesus, man. There's no devil in hell. People say, well, you don't supposed to, you can't lay hands on people hastily. That's for ordaining people into leadership. That's not because you're going to pray for them and what's in them might get on you. What am I doing? That's a spirit of fear. And God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. But you can't walk in love and power without a sound mind. Sound mind comes from the renewing of your mind. From the word of God, from the truth of God's word. Don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you can prove God's will everywhere you go. You are a walking walking, living word. God said that Jesus came and he was the word made manifest and he dwelt among us. God wants our flesh to become the very word that we say we know. Not just by theory, but application. Boom! Once you step in, nobody can take it away from you. Nobody. Nothing. But I'm praying for all these people and no one's getting healed. And I call Dan, dude, I prayed for 10 more people today, man. Did you see anything? No. He didn't say, well, Todd, you know what? You just don't have the gift of healing. I, see, I didn't see that. I saw these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they'll lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. I just saw that. That's all I saw. And I'm a simple guy. I'm not technical. And I'm not reading 15 books on how to do this. I just don't understand any of that. The Bible's enough for me. I'm like, okay. God says in his word, these signs will follow them that believe. I am a believer. I'm in. They're cast out devils. They're going to pick up serpents. I, I don't want to pick up a serpent. It's not a fear thing. I just think it's, why? And I saw that, that Paul, when he was on the island and the viper came out and bit him and he was supposed to die, they said, this man's running, now he's going to die. He shook it off, threw it in the fire, and didn't even pray. God, please help me. No, he didn't. He just shook it off and went on. And they looked at him like, oh my gosh, this guy's a God. Paul didn't think he was a God. He just knew the God that he served. And he had faith in God. Come on. If you drink anything, poison. I'm not into drinking poison. But I believe that if by accident it happened, I believe that God, was, I believe that God would rescue me. That's what the Bible says. These are things I don't have to. If I see a devil, it's got to go. Why? Because Christ is in me. The hope of glory. And devils have no access to Christ that's in me. The hope of glory. And I'm not afraid. If you walk into a room and there's a million devils, what question do you have? One person in Christ is the majority. One million devils or one person in Christ, which one wins? All I'm talking about is the truth of God's word. Just the truth. Now, I'm not seeing it yet. So a week went by. I prayed for 70 people in my first week. Not one person's healed. You know how many Christians have told me, well, why didn't you, well, you should have just, you know, I don't know how you kept going. Because people pray for three people, don't see anybody healed, and they just, well, obviously it's not mine. Stop it. Where's perseverance at? What are we doing? Why would I give up? Why would I sell so cheap when I've been purchased so expensively? I'm just not doing it, man. There are people that depend on you walking like Jesus. The Bible says be an imitator of God, dear children, and walk in love even as Christ loved us. The Bible says if anybody says that he abide in Christ, he ought to walk just like Jesus walked. The Bible says if anybody has this hope in him, he ought to purify himself just as he is pure. That's the Bible. That's the truth. That's amazing. I'm going with that. Well, I don't believe that. Well, you never read it. Or you read it and don't believe it. I'm going after it with everything I am. There are people that are alive today because I didn't drop the ball and I didn't give up. And I, I'm running with this thing. I've seen people come out of comas. I've seen people come out of wheelchairs. I've seen blind eyes open and deaf ears open. I, I love that. Why? Because that is my portion. 
God says that he likes to live in me. God doesn't just like to live in me and, and sit in there like some lake. God likes to flow through me like rivers. God doesn't expect me to have some fear thing. God crushed that spirit of fear with love and power and a sound mind. How can I walk without fear? The perfect love of God casts out all fear. If I walk in fear, I don't understand the perfect love. There's two commandments to walk out, guys. It's righteousness. Righteousness has been attained because he who knew no sin became sin so that I might become something. But if I don't realize what I've become, how can I walk out what I don't even know I've become? Righteousness produces its fruit unto holiness. It says there's two commandments. All the law and the prophets hang on these two. Love the Lord thy God with all my heart, my strength, my soul, and my mind. And then the second one is like it. Love my neighbor as myself. How can you love your neighbor if you don't even love yourself? It would be dangerous for you to minister to your neighbor but not know who you are. And it would be really dangerous for you to not know who God is. Because if you don't know who God is, then you don't know who you are. Because God created us in his image. And in his likeness he made man. Are you guys okay? I love this. This is such a good gospel, man. Praying for another person. Praying for another person. Now my wife is like, look, we're, it's over. I'm not going anywhere with you ever again. Ever. You, you obviously don't care about what I say. Honey, I do care about what you say. And then she'd say, no you don't. Because if you did, you wouldn't pray for all these people. You wouldn't embarrass me everywhere we go. See, what she's not seeing is that I was really an embarrassment before. No, I, I hurt everyone. People are dead because of the life I lived. No one told me about Jesus for 34 years of my life. Where were you, church? I'm not mad at you. But I'm not going to live with a basket on my head. I'm going to live with a heart on fire and I'm going to tell everybody about Jesus. God's not mad at me. He wants me to represent him. He paid a high price for me. And if I see my value in me, then I'll see your value in you. I'll love God with all my heart. And what people say won't determine what I'm going to walk out. I'm going to walk out what God says because I don't fear man, I fear God. And the fear of God crushes the fear of man. I will not fear man. You can't kill me. I'm never going to die. To live and believe in Jesus, that he is the resurrection and the life, I will never die. One day I'll put off this tent, but I'm going to leave a legacy. And I'm going to crush hell every day, every second of my day, everywhere I go, regardless of the place I'm at. Because no place, there's no place that's too hard for my good God. No place. It doesn't matter. I've been to some really wicked places. It doesn't matter. Jesus is Lord. Yeah, well, what? it's dark in here. People say, well, it's really dark in here. How do you... Who cares? That's because there's no light. Take the basket off, man. Shine. That's why you're there. Who knows? You're there for that reason, that purpose. You are there to shine and let your light so shine. It's just good gospel truth. Good, amazing conviction. Let your heart get convicted. Holy Ghost defibrillator. Boom! Thump your heart. I'm alive! Realize why you're on the earth. Realize the purpose you have. You are on the earth. 1 John 3, 8. To destroy the works of the devil. Jesus, the son of man, was, was made manifest. To destroy the works of the devil. What is the work of the devil? Any place death, loss, and destruction is, it's the work of hell. I know he's talking about teachers, but their doctrine came from hell. Death, loss, and destruction is from hell itself. It is not from God. The thief cometh not to steal, but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. It's exciting, man. What kind of abundant life is that? Just hanging out at church? No. It's not. Abundant life is, is making the devil wish that he never touched you or messed with you. Abundant life is making a mark on society that's saying, I serve. There's a new king in town. He lives in me. What other kind of king would give up his life to come and live in you, dwell in you, and move through you, and flow through you? What other kind of king would come and make his home inside of your heart so that you can look in the mirror and see him in there and actually say, oh my gosh, I see you in there. <sighs> wow. That's not arrogance. That's confidence. Come on. What are we thinking about? I love this. It's called terrorize the devil daily. <laughs> daily. Daily. 
really, your life is the best witness you have. Your life is. And you limit you because God won't limit you. He's given you the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, the same Holy Spirit, dwells in you. What are you doing with him? Because life is boring without a spirit-filled life. And a spirit-filled life is boring without doing something with it. Christ is in you. That's the hope of glory. But Christ coming out of you is that hope being made manifest. Christ flowing through you, making the devil wish that he never touched you. He takes a risk every time he touches you. Every time. He just wants you to never believe this. He wants you to live with theory. Man, theory doesn't do anything except make people's head big. You don't need a big head. You need a big heart because your heart can take you places your brain can't fit. It's time that we step up and just believe. Basic. No. I crush hell for a willing. You'd see my five-year-old make your head spin. My five-year-old praying for people. It's crazy. We were talking about it today. She walks up to a lady the other day. She's like, oh. She has a brace on. Can I pray for you? No, honey, I'm okay. No, really, let me do it. She's five. Kids don't get a little Holy Ghost. Do you know that? Talk about conviction. She's like, can I pray for you? She's like, okay, go ahead. She's like, Phew. my little daughter. Lord, I thank you that you take this sin out of her heart. She doesn't even know this lady. And make her leg all better. Owie, get out in Jesus' name. And the lady was laughing at my daughter until she said that. She goes, got purple. My daughter goes, Jesus loves you. She goes, what if? What if you teach your little kids that there are no limits? Who do you think that lady was thinking? <laughs> That's awesome. That's why I teach my kids. No one limits them. I teach them the word is everything. It's alive and sharp and active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Living and powerful. It separates your soul from your spirit. The Bible. The Holy Spirit. You guys ever see Avatar? Who saw Avatar the movie? Okay, well this won't make sense to the other ones that don't. The Holy Spirit. Because in the movie, in order to ride the horse, you have to hook up your dread hair to the horse. And then once it does, what happens is the horse and the person's mind become one. So with the Holy Spirit and your spirit, that's exactly how it is. But without relationship with the Holy Spirit. See, it's not just about going, growing through church because lots of people grow up in church and then they grow up in legalism. Then they find out the Holy Spirit wants to use them. So what they do, because they've been taught legalism, is they push the Bible away. And they go after the things of the Spirit, but they have no truth. So all of a sudden, they become flaky Christians. And that's not okay. We need a move of God that's pure and holy. And how can you be holy without the Holy Bible that's interpreted by the Holy Spirit? I promise. People are like, well, I don't believe in all that stuff. And there's churches that don't want anything to do with this because there's flaky Christianity out there. You don't have to be a flake. You can be a solid Christian. One that has no spirit of fear because of power and love and a sound mind. Because you know the truth concerning the doctrine. You study not to preach yourself approved, but you study to show yourself approved. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We can't afford to drop that thing. Not at all. No way. It's about being possessed by the truth of God and the spirit of God. And never allowing anything less to come into your life. Pursue peace and holiness, for without which no one will see the Lord. Oh, I study the Word every day. It's so amazing. I devour it. I live on it. I feed on it. Matter of fact, I'm fasting today, so that's really what I fed on. And I'm really hungry still. So the more I speak it out, I'm thinking maybe it's going to satisfy my hunger. Actually, to see you step into the calling of God on your life. And that doesn't mean you're called to be a preacher. That just means you're called to be a Christian full-time. 
You're called to not compromise your life. You're called to live at your job and to realize that your job's your mission field. You're called to live on your job and do your job as unto the Lord. Colossians 3, 17. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, you do it as unto the Lord and not for people. You're not working for the man. You're working for the man. If you see that, your job won't be a bummer. It'll be your L-O-V-E, amazing. Wake up, time to make the donuts, baby. I promise. And then you won't feel unfulfilled because people think, well, one day when I have a ministry, I'll be fulfilled. You're wrong. You're fulfilled the day that you say yes to Jesus. The only reason you're not is because you don't know who you're created to be. Because if you see that, your whole life is on fire from day one. No matter who says anything. Because see, my wife, she can't stand that I'm praying for people. None. So much that she won't ever go in public with me again. People say, wow, man, had to be rough. You have no idea. She's the woman that I've given my life to. She's the woman that I've dedicated everything to. She's the woman. We've become one flesh. I have people at church telling me, you got to stop praying for people. You can't. Your wife's not in agreement. The reason why God's not answering prayers is because she's not in agreement. You need to be in agreement. I get it, but they didn't see my private life. They didn't see. I was like, you need to listen to me because I'm the man. You need to submit. I didn't say that junk. That's trash. You don't say that to a wife. Why would a wife submit to somebody that doesn't love her like Christ loved the church anyway? You start loving her like Christ loved the church, I guarantee you she's like, yes, honey. Why? Because Jesus' yoke isn't hard, it's easy. And his burden is light. It is. I wouldn't put a yoke on my wife, but she can't walk out. I'm not going to tell her she's wrong. I'm just going to have to walk out what's been made right so she can see fruit on my tree. And instead of trying to sell it to her, she can just pick it. Want we'll to see your family member saved? Stop trying to sell them fruit. Just bear it. Let them pick it. What is that? Whoa. What is that? Seeds in here. Guess what it does? It reproduces after its own kind. So it's only a matter of time. So I'm praying for people for a week. Nobody gets healed. 70 people. People are like, what do you do? You just keep on going. Never allow what you didn't see to determine what you need to see. Never allow your experience that doesn't happen according to God's word trump the reality of what God's word says. But let God's word trump the reality of what you didn't see. Because you need to see this. But if you focus on this, you've dropped the ball. And I can't afford to focus on what I'm not seeing. So two weeks went by praying for 70 more people uh, every day calling Dan. Dude, I prayed for 10 more people today. Well, awesome. Did you see anything? No. But one day it's going to happen and I'm praying, God, help my belief. Really? Serious? Well, you know, they could have sin in their life or they could have this or they could have that. Everybody told me all these different things. Well, healing's not your gift, but I didn't see it as a gift. I saw it as a believer priesthood. That's how I saw it. I, the Bible say that or not? These signs will follow believers. So I'm like, huh, just I'm a believer. I'm in. I'm a believer. Lord, help my unbelief. Because I can't, I can't do this. Well, it's not just your unbelief. People, t- people told me, man, people, well-meaning people, told me, listen, you need to stop. You're opening up doors. You need to stop. And that, to me, that was fear. I'm like, that's fear. Like, why would I open a door to the devil? I'm, there's no sin in my life. Like, I'm, I'm in love with Jesus. Like, the last thing I'm trying to do is sin and get away with it. Like I lived a life of sin. For 22 years I was twisted and it was whacked. Now I'm free from that thing that manipulated me and mastered me. I'm not a slave to sin. I'm a slave unto righteousness. I am a slave. I'm a weapon. Wow. Wow. Under righteousness. I'm no, sin's not my master anymore. It's the last one I want to serve. The last one. I got a brand new dad. He's amazing. Wow. Three weeks went by, nobody gets healed. Four weeks go by, nobody gets healed. Five weeks go by, nobody gets healed. Everybody's got every reason why not. Well, they need more faith. They need this, they need that, they need that. I just didn't see Jesus say, listen, I'd love to pray for you, but it's not your time. I didn't see Jesus say, look, I'd love to pray for you, but you need to go get some more faith and come back and we'll do this. But I heard a lot of people tell me that the church told them that all the time. Well, you know, they told me there must be sin in my life. Have you searched your heart? Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. I just don't understand why. Well, you must be in unforgiveness. Tell me one person that Jesus told that to. And I'm not saying that unforgiveness can't cause problems. Because it can. Unforgiveness is an epidemic. It's horrible. But Jesus was on the earth and there was 400 years without a voice from God. 
400 years without a voice from God. Do you think that one or two of them Israelites went a bit in unforgiveness? No voice from God, no prophetic voice. John the Baptist is the first voice on the planet, but he's just declaring and preparing the way. Make a straight path for the Lord to travel. He's not even the one, but he's bearing witness of the light. Are you with me? Jesus comes. He's the real light, and in him was the light of men. Guess what's in you? Jesus just crushed it. And if people didn't have faith, he gave them more faith by doing the miracle anyway. If he saw faith, whoa. <sighs> Amazing faith. Awesome. Your faith got you this one. But when he didn't see it, he didn't say, get some more faith and come back. No, he did it. Why? Because God's will. Come on. I hope this is making sense. It makes sense to my heart. It did at the time when everybody, almost, almost 100% of the people were telling me all these other reasons. And I'm praying for people. And then another month went by and not one person was healed. That's ridiculous. Like not one. We're talking like, we're talking 70 people a week times two months. That's like less than 600, but a lot of people. How many people have prayed for five people, didn't see a miracle and they didn't want to do it anymore because they figured it wasn't their gift? You have cut yourself off. All you need to do is pick up and run now. Just, I'm telling you, just repent. Repent means change the way you think. I was walking this way, prayed for five, nothing happened. Well, what do you do? Well, all right, that's over. I promise you, repent means change the way you think. Change the way you think. Boom, run. That's it. So three months go by, no one's healed. It's like crazy. And... My wife wouldn't go in public with me anyway, but I didn't have anybody to share these testimonies with. And the testimonies I was sharing was nobody got healed today, but I prayed for all this. And this one time, I prayed for this guy. He got kind of ran from me, but I called him. <laughs> really? I was a lunatic. And my daughter was with me for a lot of them. Man, yeah, we prayed for all these people. And mom would go, I don't want to hear it. Don't you understand? I don't care. I don't want to hear this. I told you to stop. You don't care. You don't listen to me. I said, well, honey, you're my best friend. I need to talk to somebody. I don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah, but, but I love you. And I would go, get home. I'd go back in my bedroom. I'd tuck away. I'd open my Bible. I'd get on my knees and say, God, help me become what this word says. God, help me to love my wife like you love the church. God, help me to see her creative value. God, never let me see her for anything less than what you see here. God, I thank you. She is a bright and shining lamp. God, I thank you so much. You love her. She's amazing. She is good. God, thank you for this woman that you've given me. God, I love her. I love you. I thank you. Father, thank you for my daughter. God, come here, Destiny. Come in here and pray for her. Father, I thank you for my little girl. God, I thank you that I'm walking out. It looks like I'm a fool in everybody's eyes my little daughter's like dust because people are laughing at me making fun of me mocking me going like this behind my head my daughter sees all that stuff all of it all of it so three months go by nobody's healed pray for a lot of people almost 900 people then pray for more another one another week went by another one another one another one another one nothing what do you do do you give up no God never gave up on me why would I give up? Why would I throw in the towel? Why would I just bow out? The Bible says these signs will follow them that believe. I'm a believer. How dare the devil stand in the way of me? No, it's not happening. I'm praying for people. Another one, nothing. Another one, nothing. Another one, nothing. What do you do? People, I tell people this. They're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Why don't you give up already? Because most people have. Because perseverance isn't something that we're used to but I promise you it's everything because trials because I'm in great trial man trials produces perseverance my perseverance my patience people are like patience is such a bummer I hate patience <laughs> I'm hearing all the time you had a conference on patience everybody's like oh, sign me up conference on patience amen no church is like uh uh <laughs> last time I prayed for that I, every traffic light no way God opened the door for me patience no the reason why we hate patience is because we don't understand love because the first thing love is is patient love is patient love is kind that's what love is God is love how patient was God with you how many years did it take for you to say yes for me it took 34 
No one witnessed me. No one shared the gospel with me. Why am I so adamant about this? Because I'm not going to walk by people and not share Jesus, man. I don't care. People have told me, you can't just do that. Yes, I can. We have to be led. No, get a lead sinker, put it in your pocket, get one for each day. Reach down, get a hold of that thing, feel led, and get this thing on with Jesus and stop coming up with excuses. I'm serious. Feel led. Oh, there it is. I feel it. Now get it on. Just go. Run with this thing. Stop being afraid. The reason why you don't feel less is because you feel fear. That's why. I'm not kidding. I don't, I don't I just don't feel that. No, no, no. You feel fear. Don't be afraid. What are you afraid of? Perfect love casts out all fear. What do you got to lose besides your dignity? And that's not a fruit of the Spirit. So get rid of that thing. Well, no, no, no. Hey, I'm a little pride here. No, stop. Don't mix this thing up. Man, aren't you glad God doesn't have pride? Well, forget it. Now you want to repent? I don't think so. It's been 34 years. Get away from me. <laughs> or how about this? You mess up. Come waddling across the field. God, phew, I'm not running to you. Are you serious? Get out of my face. No, that's not our father. <sighs> Here's some shoes, ring, sandals. Clothe me with righteousness and welcome home, son. Let's go crush the devil. Come on, let's throw a party. But the older brother gets mad. Now, I've always done everything for you. I mean, obviously, I have no idea who I am or what I have. Because you just gave him, threw him a, a party. And look at me. You haven't done nothing like that for me. Son, all that I've had has always been yours. Yeah, whatever. What are we thinking? Our God, our Father is totally different than that, man. Even right now, people are like, wow, I've just gone too far. I don't think so. Well, I blast from the Holy Spirit. If you cared about it, you didn't. People are like, well, I've, I've done the unpardonable sin. You know how many Christians I've talked to? I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. I've committed the unpardonable sin. And the very fact that it convicts you means you didn't. I, I don't change your life forever. The devil, oh, you blast from the Holy Spirit. It's over now. And all of a sudden, you live your whole life for 30 years condemned like you did the unpardonable sin. And the very fact that your heart cares about it means that you didn't. It's, it's so simple. It's such a lie. It's such a simple, simple truth. The devil's such a liar. He's such a scammer, man. And he plays on people's emotions. Well, I feel like I did. Well, you're deceived because we don't live by feelings. We live by faith. So another week and a half go by. I'm three and a half months old in Jesus. I'm in a guard shack. Yes, Lord. He's telling you guys to believe what I'm saying. It's exciting. So I'm in this guard shack. Some guy pulls up with his truck. And I think this thought was crazy. He gets out of his truck and I don't like, there's no obvious need there, but I think this thought, two herniated discs and sciatic nerve damage down his leg. I don't even know what sciatic nerve damage is. Where are you going, Craig? I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Hey, you probably have done that before. Sorry. I love that man. I do. Two herniated discs. I saw he made a break for it. He's got a break. Two herniated discs, sciatic nerve damage down his leg. I never, I, I'm not smart enough to understand what that stuff is. So I thought to myself, that's crazy. What is that? So I asked him, hey man, you have two herniated discs, sciatic nerve damage down your leg? He goes, yes. I go, oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was. I'm like, I'm not smart enough to think about that. That had to be God. Come into my guard shack. So he comes in this little square building I had. He said, comes in, I go, hey man, look, in this Bible, you Christian? No, I'm Catholic. Okay, awesome. Look, you believe in Jesus? Well, yes. I said, you know, Mary can't, Mary didn't die for your sin, right? Oh no. Well, Jesus did. You can't put your faith in Mary. It has to be in Jesus. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Here's Jesus. Red letters are Jesus. When Jesus is speaking, it's red letters. We should pay attention to them. Yes. Okay. Besides, at the wedding of Cana, 
When Jesus was there, remember when Mary turned water into wine? Oh, yeah. Everybody knows that. I go, man. I said, so, so Jesus is there, and they ran out of wine. And Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit. He doesn't understand this part, but I go, and, and Jesus is there. They run out of wine. So Mary, like, if you were a woman and you got pregnant by God, you would know who you got pregnant by, right? Yes. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but I'm crazy. <laughs> Out of all people on the planet, you would know that Jesus was a real deal. Like, if you never had a man, and then there's a baby in your belly, like, she's the only woman that ever happened to you. Ever. Ever. That's trying to explain that to people. Well, you know, I mean, it was God. Stoner. <laughs> she knew this is Jesus. He came from God. She knows. And she is still just as pregnant with Jesus as the first day that he was placed in her belly. Nine months in, she delivered Jesus, but she still knows that Jesus is the Christ. And for 30 years, she's held that thing in. 30 years. She knows. They run out of wine. Okay. Jesus says, what does this have to do with me? My time hasn't come yet when she asked him. Mary's like, you know what? Says, I love this. I love how she just delivered Jesus at the wedding feast. This is amazing to me. She looks at the people. She says, Look, she looks at the servants. She goes, do whatever Jesus tells you, okay? I'm out. And Mary backed out of the equation. Jesus heard from God, it's not your time because Jesus never did anything unless the Father told him to do it. He never said anything unless the Father told him to say it. So obviously God told him to say, it's not my time. He said, woman, what does this have to do with me? It's not my time. Mary said, absolutely, I I'm not going down that road. Absolutely not. You do whatever Jesus tells you to do. And what happened was the hunger of Mary turned the heart of the Father. Oh, listen to me. L listen very carefully. The hunger of your heart, where it might have been years down the road where something was going to break through, the hunger of your heart can pull into your today what was reserved for tomorrow. How hungry are you and what are you hungry for? Because I promise you, what I'm preaching tonight is just normal Christianity. I'm not preaching some strange doctrine. I'm preaching this because I walk it out. I'm not preaching something that I just came up with. This is crazy. So Mary said, do whatever he says. So I said to the guy, I said, Jesus says to pray for the sick. And I, I'm in Mark 16. I couldn't get my eyes off of this. I'm talking like a thousand people. And I'm still focused on the same scripture that everybody tried to explain away. But it's still in the Bible. Even if they explained it away, it's still in there. It's still right there. Like, well, it's not for you. Well, it's right there. Yeah, but it's not for today. We, don't, we go past that page. What? No, sorry. No, it's right there. It's me. I'm a believer. It's mine. 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 So I told the guy, I said, it says these signs will follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick. I said, your back is sick, man. He goes, okay, what do we do? I said, just stand there, man. I didn't say, now listen, before we do this, I have to warn you. I've prayed for almost a thousand people and none of them have gotten better. So we need to go over this first, okay? Because you're like 1,000. I need you to get into a place of faith. Because obviously it was their fault, not mine. He goes, okay, what do we do? I said, we're just going to pray, man. So I put my hand on his back and pray any differently than I prayed before. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for this back being better. Brand new disc, God. Jesus' name. Amen. I said, okay. He goes, now what do we do? I said, bend over, man. He goes, okay. He gets up and he goes, you have a power. I go, no, stop. The Bible says this. He goes, no, no, no. Oh, I said, stop. Because you have a power. I said, stop, man. Stop. He goes, no, 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 no. You, shh, shh, you have a power. I said, no, no, no. Jesus, he's the restaurant. No, shh, just, you, oh, shh. Oh, he goes out of there, left. Cross, crying. I'm like, oh my God, that happened. <laughs> really, I'm so.
so, I'm so excited. Wow! I went, it was my break. They came out to relieve me. The guard check, I go inside. I gotta call my wife. She's gonna be so excited. Hey, can I talk to Jackie, please? What? Guess what? What? I am busy. No, you don't understand. God spoke to me today. And then I prayed for click. She hung up. You know what I didn't do? Are you serious? I was so excited about what God did. I'm like, I gotta call Dan. Dan's gonna be super excited. I call him. He goes, yep. I go, guess what? He goes, what? I go, it happened. Dan was like, okay, what happened? I go, man, my all the time I pray for people. I got a great thing to tell you today. It's amazing. Dan told me that's called a testimony. Testimony means do it again, God. Do it again. What you did once, you do again. God, thank you. Do it again. Here I am, God. Here I am. Send me. Do it again. 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 Wow. And I, and I shared the testimony. It took me like a half an hour on my lunch break to share it. And then he pulled up and the wheels stopped. And then he got out of the truck one foot at a time. And then he came up to my window. I didn't say, and God gave me a word of knowledge. I didn't know that much yet. I didn't know what that was. That's what it was. I didn't know what it was. He said, Todd, that's a, that's a word of knowledge. I go, awesome. Like I had this knowledge. I knew this. It was awesome. He said, God told you. I go, oh, it was so good. How did he tell me? Like, I'm so excited. I'm like, okay, let's go over this again. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. And I figured, you know what? This is awesome. Yay. And the rest of my day, I'm like, oh, man, this is awesome. And I prayed for some more people and nothing happened that day. And what do you do? Never allow what you don't see to determine what you need to see. So I went home and I started my own testimony book. I'm going to write down whatever God's doing. I'm going to keep my eyes on what I'm seeing them do instead of what I'm not seeing happen. That's what I thought in my heart. I wrote it down, took me a whole page. I'm like, I, I, just like I told Dan, I wrote the whole thing out. Man, my wife didn't want to talk to me. It's done. Just don't talk. I don't want to hear it. I would, every day, I would come home. I would get a shower because I stank because I worked hard. And I would go and I would make dinner for my family. We would eat and, and I could pray over the food. And that was about as far as it went. And then when I started to share testimonies of stuff that didn't happen, I don't want to hear it. And then she would watch TV, and I would go back in my bedroom. I'd get on my knees, because this is where it's at. I would get on my knees when no one's looking. I would open my Bible, and I'd say, God, make me become what this word says. Because that's where grace is, right there. Grace is learning, God, I, I don't yet understand this the way I need you. But God, I'm asking, you can't just put the Bible on your head and hope it goes in. That's not how it happens, man. People think that. They have a Bible on their nightstand, a Bible in the closet, a Bible on the bed, a Bible over here, and they never pick it up. It ain't going to do nothing for you, except you'll have no dust there when you lift it up, because it's all on top. That's not okay. You need to grow in your identity and who God's created you to be. So I, I kept praying for people, and I think that first week, I saw two people healed. Still prayed for an average of 10 people every day. Like, how do you do it? I'm just going after this thing, man. Going after it with everything I am everything I am. Now all of a sudden like a couple months in, I'm seeing a couple people here every day. It's like exciting. Like, like one or two people every day. Yay. Five and a half months in after I'm seeing, after I saw people like start to get healed it's ridiculous. It took me 45 minutes to an hour and a half every day to write down testimonies of one day. Every day. And I didn't even do it to have a ministry. <laughs> Like, I'm praying for all these people, and I don't even have a ministry. It's just fun. It's my life. It's a lifestyle. Like, every day. It's, hey, wake up, guys. It's for you. Every second of every day. To be focused and have your mind set on things above and not beneath. Hope deferred makes your heart sick. But how can your hope be deferred if you're hoping from here? You repent. You live from here to there. Here to there. 
everything that God has is available for you. It's all yours. It's all according to the Spirit and the same Holy Spirit. So I started reading about Jesus and gifts and, and all these things. I'm like, okay, well, I don't really want to focus on that. I just want to focus on God and how much He loves me and how much He loves people. And that became my life every day. It's about how much He loves people, how much He loves me. It's exciting. He loves me, He loves me, He loves me, He loves me. And then God started to speak to me about people. It was crazy. I remember being in a restaurant. My wife, like this one time, I, I, I actually forgot that recently she brought up. It was almost, we're about seven months in. And we're at a restaurant. We sit down. We're at Fridays. We're sitting there, and there's a mom, a daughter, and a granddaughter. All three generations are sitting at the table. And my wife is there with me and Destiny. God speaks to me audibly, like, tells me about what happened to that daughter tells me that the father claimed to be a Christian and hurt her really badly and the mom doesn't know it yet and her daughter is suffering because of what the or her granddaughter the granddaughter is suffering because of what the moms went through so I tell my wife at the table this is what God just said she says you better not I gotta go to the bathroom I went to the bathroom I have tears in my eyes because it's horrible and God doesn't reveal something so you play charades. He's not playing charades with you. He doesn't talk to you about something so you keep it into yourself. And why would we expect God to give us more stuff if we're not willing to do the basic stuff that he's told us already? People pray for prophetic words and pray for all this stuff. Why would God give you more when you're not willing to walk out what you have? Come on then, people, well, I never got a prophetic word. Would you ever walk out what he told you? Well, no, I'm waiting for God to put it in my lap. Stop it. What about the people that you see? What about loving people that are in front of you? What about being selfless and loving people? Full on, fire, man. Every day. So I went to the bathroom. I came out and I said, Lord, you have to do something because there's no way that I can just walk over that table. My wife is going to, she doesn't go anywhere in public with us. What am I going to do? He didn't say, well, here's what I'm going to do. My wife's like, eat fast now. We're leaving. I'm like, okay. So we eat really quick. I'm talking five minutes when I got to the table. We leave. As soon as we get up, they get up at the same time. My wife goes, oh my God. <laughs> I'm serious. I hold the door for all of them. My wife, oh gosh. She ran to the car. Hold the door. I walk out right after the daughter. I said, hey honey, I need to talk to you. She goes, what? I said, I saw what your father did to you. She goes, What? I said, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus with all my heart. That's my wife and that's my daughter. I'm not a crazy guy. I said, and I know that's your daughter and I know that's your mom. And I know that your dad, her husband did this to you. And he's not around anymore, but I'm going to tell you that he said that he knew God, but he didn't. Because if he did, he'd have never done that stuff to you. And you're mad at God because you think that God did this and God didn't do this. God doesn't come to steal, kill, and destroy. God came to give you life and life more abundantly. She looks at me, she goes, you have no idea. I said, I do. I actually... I actually saw it was horrible and I'm really sorry honey but I promise you that Jesus would never do that to you I was a drug addict for 22 years and I'm sharing with her she goes you have no idea what this means to me I said I do I said now you and your daughter can have life and even if you never talk to your mom about any of this stuff you need to know it wasn't God and you can teach your little one about Jesus now she goes thank you she gave me a hug I went hey man I get in the car who do you think you are I didn't say anything. I cried the whole way home. Because what's that worth? Is that worth getting persecuted for? You better believe it is, man. Is it worth losing your dignity for? That little girl. Blame God for something that God never did. What's it worth to you? For your wife or your spouse to be mad at you because you're stepping out believing the truth. You don't parade this thing around and tell her she's wrong and you're right. You can be very wrong about being right. It's not about that. It's about Jesus. It's about humbling yourself so that grace may abound towards you. It's about the love of God for people, the love of God for your wife. So a couple weeks go by, and my wife says to me and my daughter one day, I am going to go to the grocery store with you today. I went, no way. Yes, because I am sick and tired of you taking so long to do shopping. I go, Okay. She goes, and you will not embarrass me because we will not see each other in this store. 
I go, how's it going to happen? She goes, you're going this way, I'm going that way. I have a list, I'm making you a list. Checking it twice. I said, all right. I told Destiny, I said, mom's going with us to the store. She goes, no. I said, yeah. She goes, daddy, we're not praying for anybody, right? See, what people don't understand is how horrible it really was in the house and how much persecution it was and how much of an embarrassment I was. It was way worse than anybody knows. Way worse. It's surreal to me because her mom hated me and she's consoling in her mom that hates me. And her mom, see, you threw your life away. Look, you married a lunatic. Now I hope you're happy. Look at what you've done. You've thrown your whole life away. No, mom, he's, he's different. He just won't stop praying for people. Like he believes the Bible. All the stuff that he's claiming is in there. Well, I, I'm telling you, he's crazy. He's a lunatic. I told you you shouldn't have married him. Yeah, but mom, he loves God. He loves us. He doesn't swear None of those things, none of those habits, all, they're all gone. There was nothing that she could convict me of. And there was no sin that mom could convict me of, except that I was possessed with wanting to believe the Bible. <laughs> so she went to the store. Sure enough, whew, she was, I will see you in 30 minutes in the car. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. We went this way, she went that way. My daughter and I are walking down where the vegetables and stuff are. We go by, we see a lady in a scooter. We're like, oh. I said, look, Dad, there's a lady in a scooter right there. She goes, Dad, Mommy's in the store. I go, but we just got here. There's no way Mommy's going to see us. It sounds funny. But my wife pretty much cut us off from going in public for nine months. One day is a lot. A week is a lot. A month is a lot more than a lot. Two months is a lot, a lot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. With one time in between that like really damaged her wanting to go anywhere because of that girl that I just explained about. So we walked down and I said, hey, honey. I said, God, God wants you to be healed. Can we pray for you? I'm okay. Thank you anyway, obviously. She doesn't believe in other people praying for her. I said, honey, can we please pray for you? She looks at me, she goes, I said no. Okay. But see, I pray for a lot of people and I've heard every, all these excuses of why not. So I have to ask her what hers is. Why won't you let, listen, every night a man named Richard Roberts prays for me on the television. Every night. I said, okay. He says, put your hand towards the TV, and I do every night. So she at least believes in healing. I said, well, I understand. I said, so you're believing you're healed, but you're waiting for that manifestation. Because it says by his stripes you're healed. But if we're not seeing breakthrough, we want breakthrough. I said, so can we pray? Because we're members of the body of Christ. I said, no. So I didn't know any better. I looked at her granddaughter. And I said, hey, honey. I said, do you want your grandma to be able to play with you again? Grandma looks at me like she. You didn't just do that. And I wasn't trying to be arrogant or nothing. As a matter of fact, I was ignorant. I didn't understand the severity of what she was dealing with. Her, grand, her granddaughter was seven and a half, same age as mine. She's never played with her grandma because she's been in that wheelchair. So I asked her, was it your knee or your, it's my back. I've had four back surgeries. I'm on chronic pain medication for 27 years. I am fused in the seated position. I cannot stand up straight. I'm thinking, what is that? I don't know what a fusion is. She's fused like this in the seated because of pain, because it restricts some of the pain, but she's still on chronic pain medication. She spends all of her money on pain meds. Like it's ridiculous, bad. Food stamps, the whole thing. Granddaughter has to drive the scooter out to the car to get her in, out of the seat, transfer to get her in. And this is a little girl. She goes, I'm in pain. I said, come on, can we pray for you? She goes, hurry up. She's mad. A lot of Christians would think, well, God can't move here. And they go through the Christian ritual, but really not believing that God's gonna do anything because she's angry. How could God move in the midst of this? It's easy. 
remember that it's God's goodness that brings people to repentance. What if they need an encounter with his goodness that causes them to repent? That's what people need. So we pray for her, nothing happens. I said, honey, I said, can you stand up and check? She's like, I'm in pain. Please, honey, can you just check? She says, I'm, grandma, please. So the granddaughter's just trying to beg grandma. Grandma goes, you have no idea. And she's sweating and it's not the presence of God. It's the pain that she's in. She stands up, she's like this, trembling. I said, come on, let's pray again. We prayed and it went, pop. And it popped underneath her hands. And the granddaughter goes, and the lady goes like this. And I went, oh my God. Because 27 years she's been bowed over. 27 years straight. I never saw anything like this. God got way bigger than I was ever used to. I never saw anything like it. But how can we ever see anything that we've never seen if we're never willing to step out and believe God? So she stood up. The granddaughter goes, Grandma, run! I went, oh my God. And they went, run, I can hardly walk. Come on, Grandma. She took her Grandma and they ran down the aisle. I'm like, oh my God. My daughter's like, yay. And they turn around, they're coming back. They're about 30 feet from me and my wife walks in the aisle. It's exactly what happened. My daughter went, gets behind me. She literally, you can ask my wife, she'll come sometime. She's behind me hiding. Dad, we're in big trouble. We're in big trouble, Dad. Big trouble. But this lady's healed. I'm like, what am I going to do? Oh, no. And the granddaughter goes, what's wrong? I go, she's so full of joy. She's so happy. She ran with her grandma. She's never, ever, 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 ever been able to play with her grandma since she's been born. She's only seven and a half. That's, her grandma has been in that chair for 26 and a half years before she was even born. So the only playing she has is maybe tossing a ball from the chair. They ran. Grandma goes, I can't believe this. this is awesome. God will heal me. Now she's excited. Now she's like, hurry up and get done. Now she's happy. <laughs> My wife's not happy. See, by the time she looked up, she's already like 15 feet in the aisle. She knows there's an empty scooter. She knows there's a problem right now. She doesn't know that she's the problem. Not limiting God, but limiting her. So the lady goes, who's that? I said, honey, this is my best friend. Her name's Jackie. Destiny won't even talk. She's behind me hiding. I'm really not kidding. Oh my God. Dad, we're in so much trouble, 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 so much trouble. Little granddaughter's like, are you okay? She goes down, she goes, I said, can you please go tell my friend? She walks down, she goes, I sure will. She walks down, my wife goes, oh my God. I'm gonna send her to me. She didn't do that, I'm just kidding. She goes down there, and the lady starts talking to her. My wife looks at me, she's still mad as, I mean like, really mad. And then the lady turns around, lifts her shirt up, and shows her a scar on her back. My wife goes, Oh my, oh my god, oh my god. And she, ah! and I'm like, ah! and our cry is mad. Except I'm down here, God, this is so good. Oh my god, is god. What's mommy's really mad? No, she's crying, honey. No, she's really mad. We're in big, big trouble, dad. Big trouble, big, big, big trouble. No, honey, these are good tears. What do you mean good tears? <gasps> oh my god, what's going on, dad? I said, I think God's talking to mom. She goes, okay, because I'm not going to talk to mom right now. <laughs> I'm serious. That granddaughter drove that scooter out that day. We went up to the cash register. I'm the first one in line. My daughter is in the middle. My daughter's laughing. I am bawling like, uh, like someone's died. <laughs> it's horrible. My wife is crying. Worse than I. <laughs> one of those cries. <laughs> I got to pay the bill. I always talk to the people at the register. Everyone. It doesn't matter. I always talk. Tell them about Jesus. I can't even talk. <laughs> My daughter's like, it looks like we have an evil stepchild. Something <laughs> bad. Does. 
I know you were thinking that. Does it looks like something's wrong with my daughter? <laughs> we go out to the car. I didn't say anything. I'm like, I am such a mess. Like, this was like breakthrough. My wife calls it labor. Get to my house. I put everything away. Always do. Always did. I didn't need a thank you. I wasn't going to get a thank you from her. I just do my job is under the Lord. Whatever I do in word or deed, no matter what it is, whether it's for my boss, it doesn't matter. I'm always doing it unto God. I always have a thankful heart. So we're praying and just having a thankful heart. Put everything away. I go back in my bedroom. I am done. I lay on my bed and it's my prayer. Father, thank you so much for letting me see my wife through her creative value. God, even if she never says anything, God, I just thank you so much for who she is. God, thank you that you've never let me get hurt, God, that you've always kept me in a place hurting for her. Father, I thank you for this amazing woman that you gave me. God, I thank you that you're talking to her. See, I would come out of the bedroom. I would pray that same way for nine months. I come out of the bedroom, my wife, get away from me, okay. But that day, it was different. I come out of my bedroom after an hour and a half. I snot, teared, messed my bed, mess. I go out there, my wife's on the couch, still sobbing. I go, hey. She goes, yeah. I go, are you okay? She goes, no. I go, what's wrong? She goes, God spoke to me. This is where it's at. Because God needs to speak to your persecuting spouse. God needs to speak to your wayward son. God needs to speak to them. But the best life that you have is living full bore for Jesus until he speaks to them and allow your life to be a witness everywhere you go and you be an imitator of God dear children and walk in love even as Christ loved us because regardless of what the Pharisees said regardless of what everybody else said Jesus didn't bow to Satan Jesus walked profuse on fire and if you desire to live godly I promise that persecution will come but that persecution who cares about the light affliction compared to the eternal weight of glory and that's not just when you get to heaven. That's now. God's glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. But man, when you squeeze this, Jesus comes out everywhere. So when I get squeezed, Jesus gets on. When the devil squeezes me, he takes a risk. So I promise you, Jesus is coming out. He's not going to get me because me died. When you get squeezed, what comes out? When you go through great trial, what comes out? When you get squeezed, the devil ought to take a risk. When your family persecutes you, just be quiet, be silent. I ought to talk about family reunions or those things, or Christmases or Thanksgivings, because I've been through some serious ones. I've been in court with relatives that want to put a bullet in my head. Why? Because they hate the Jesus that I serve. Your war is not against flesh and blood, it's against principalities, demonic, demonic stuff spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places your war is not against people it's against their mindset how they're thinking that's where your war is so stop being offended and stop praying that that they get fixed so your life gets better people are not your problem you are people aren't your problem if you got a problem with this one and this one and this one it's not them it's you it's you it's you no, it's not. It's them. You don't know what they did to me. It's you. No, you don't know what they did to me. Me, 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 me. It's you. It's you. It's not them. It's you. Consider Jesus who suffered hardship, persecution horrible, yet like a lamb, silent to the slaughter. Consider Jesus. Consider what he did for you. So my wife looks at me and she goes, God spoke to me. I said, what did he say? He said, I've given you a new husband. A man you never knew you could have. He just believes me. Now why don't you? And I go, what are you going to do? <laughs> I really are. You have no idea. This, if, if you knew just how... How aggressive it was. She goes, who am I to stand in the way of God? I will never stand in the way of God again. I go, honey, you never stood in the way of God. She goes, yes, I did. Stop it. I go, okay. <laughs> but God still healed all these people all the time. And I showed her my book. Oh, my 
my God. <laughs> what did you tell me? I tried. I tried. I tried. That took nine months. How long are you willing? How long are you willing to wait? What's love worth to you? What's it like to be a believer? If you desire to live godly, you'll suffer persecution. It's the way it is, man. But it's nothing. And to a life that's yielded, to a life that's surrendered, it's everything. Look, there's a lot of people here I know, and I'm glad you came. There are people here that don't know Jesus. I know there is because I've been seeing them. And I'm really sorry. And there are people here that have blamed God for things that God has never done. There are people here that have been angry with their spouse because their spouse wants to step out and listen to me. I saw it because I saw people hitting each other. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, think I saw it. I saw it. See, see, see. Don't let pride get in there. Don't be arrogant. God loves you. All God's asking you is for everything that you are. He's asking for full commitment. He's asking for everything that you are. That's all He wants. He wants everything. It's not asking for much. I mean, He created you. All He's asking you to do is give back what you've held back from Him. So if you're here and you're willing to give God back the life that's really not yours to begin with, come up here. Come on. Just stand up here. Just right there on that line. That'll be good, right there. Come on. Come on. It's no, it's no fun living in selfishness. It's no fun living that stuff anyway. I was talking about like full on commitment. Full on saying, Jesus, I just say yes with everything I am. So all you other people better be on fire and living for Jesus every day. I promise. Listen, there are people that are in here that are, that are hooked on drugs, that are, that are twisted up, hooked on pornography, hooked on all that stuff. Just come on. Just say, I'm just done with that stuff. Come on. Come on. If you're upstairs, get down here. Don't play games with this thing. You're not a bad person. Look, that junk convicts your heart. That's good. Conviction is amazing because where conviction is, transformation is possible. Don't violate your conscience and don't let anybody else tell you. Listen, if you're here and you need to be right with God, get up here. If you're here and you need to get right with God, get up here. Don't be afraid. Come on. You go, girl. I'm proud of you. Come on, man. I'm proud of you. Don't be afraid. Listen. When you stand before God, when you stand before God, when you stand before God, it ain't gonna be the, the pastor that wronged you. They're not, your, your excuse is not gonna work. It ain't gonna be my dad that didn't walk this out. It ain't gonna be my mom that did this. It ain't gonna be the people that did this when I was a kid. None of that stuff. You're gonna stand before God, you're gonna answer for your own life. I promise you. It's gonna be you and your life. Nobody is your excuse. Nobody, I'm really sorry, just like that girl. I'm sorry that your dad did that. But God didn't do that, I promise you. He did not, he did not, not do that. He would not. God is a good God. He is a loving God. The goodness and kindness of God leads a person to repentance. He's the one, he's the one. Jesus loves you. 
He wants you to burn. He wants you to be on fire now so that people that have don't need to burn later. He wants you to burn for him now. I'm talking about giving your life completely to God. If you've been living a hypocrite life, if you've been living a life that's just less than what you know is possible, listen, don't sit there in twistedness. Say, I'm just done. I'm going to burn for Jesus right now. I'm going to burn with everything I am. If I had a baptism tank, I would hold you down to the bubble stop right now. I know you do. This church comes equipped with one, I promise. Listen, I'm not, I want you to hear me. I'm not making light of what people have done. I'm not making light of pastors or leaders people that have offended you or hurt you in the church I'm not making light of that I'm not, I'm not condoning what they've done I'm telling you that you're responsible for your own life you are, you're responsible for your own life nobody's responsible for your life but you, I teach my kids nobody can help your relationship with God but you, you are the one that's responsible for your own relationship you okay dude? you alright? I love you man come on Jesus, we say yes, God. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes, God. We say yes, God. Now, before we pray, I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about one more thing. We're gonna pray for this, and then we're gonna pray for healing, and because Jesus is awesome. That's how. We, that's how we do it. People get hurt by the church and say, I don't want nothing to do with church. And then people get saved, they give their life to Jesus, and then they never plug into a church. Or people get offended and say, well, I don't want to go back into that very thing that hurt me before. It's not about that. You need a local church. You need a body of Christ that you can have and call family. So it's very, 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 very important that you'd have a local church. You'd have some place that you live around that you can go and call family. Don't allow what you've been through before to determine what you're going to go through now. And don't allow what you've been through to determine what you're going to go through. And never, ever, ever are we supposed to go to church to try to get love there. We're supposed to become love and plug in. But that means that you surrender, give up, and say, here I am. I'm part of the body of Christ. I'm going to find out why God has me on this planet. I'm going to plug in. I'm going to make myself useful. Come on. Are you with me? In other words, you need to be a part of a church somewhere. God's family. Jesus hung on a tree and died so that the church would be made available. And we get part of the church. We, we the fullness of God that fills all in all. The fullness of him that fills all in all. The body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Listen, if your boyfriend, girlfriend, and you came up here, make a commitment. Say, look, I just, I'm not just going to continue living this way. I'm actually going to make a commitment and actually ask you to marry me because I'm willing to sleep with you every day of my life that I'm willing enough to call myself a man of God. Will you marry me? Make a commitment. Don't play games with this thing. I promise you. Don't just leave this altar and say, well, yeah, I'm right with God, yet continue in a twisted place. It's not okay. I promise. You guys all right? Man, I'm so proud of you. Boy, the devil fears you guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so let's pray this. Are you ready? Everybody say, Lord Jesus. I'm so yes, come on. Whoa, what was that? No, right, just pray this with me. Lord God, I'm coming to you right now. And you run across the field to me. Because you're a good father. You paid a high price for me. That makes my life worth it to you. That makes me have great value before you. The value of my life. 
is determined by the price you paid for me. And heaven went bankrupt to get me back. I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sin, of all my junk. And remove it right now. I today am giving my life 100% of it back to you. I'm not going to run away from you. I commit to run with you. You forgive me of all of my sin. I desire to walk like Jesus walked. Humble. Blameless. Thoughtless. Pure. You cleanse me of all of my sin. You heal me of all my disease. I say yes to you. In Jesus' name. All addiction. We command it to leave right now. That's no longer a part of who I am. This is your life. My life is your life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Jesus. 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 your hands Holy Spirit I welcome you right now baptize me with your presence Jesus name if you know how to pray in the spirit lift up your voice right now right now come more Phil, in Jesus' name. Phil, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come right now. More. More. Jesus. Jesus. Come right now. Phil, God. Jesus. Phil. Phil, God. Jesus. Every devil in this place. Go. Jesus name. Come on, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Right now, God, more, more. Fill. 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 More. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, more, more, I just watched a whole bunch of you just, just shift right now, if you can feel a shift right now, just wave your hand right now, I, I'm not kidding, like I just saw it all over the room, more, more God, more, 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 flame of heaven, more, Jesus, 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 
Jesus. Flame of heaven. More. Every devil. Go. In Jesus name. Out. Now. Jesus. Right now. Jesus. Jesus. Right now. Every devil. I command you out now. Jesus name. Now. Go. Now. Now. Jesus name. Jesus name. Every devil. Jesus name. If you've got sickness or disease in your body, I want you to lift one hand up right now. Body of Christ, you see the hands that are up? Put your hand on somebody right now that has their hand up. Come on, guys. These signs will follow them that... Who? Who? Are you believers? Even if you're up here, you are now. Come on. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you right now for complete wholeness, 100% healing all over this house. In Jesus' name right now, every bit of sickness, every bit of disease, no matter what it is, in the name of Jesus, we command it to go. Her back. Pray for this girl in the stripes in her, her back. Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. 100% healing. I thank you for every person's head that gives them any pain whatsoever. That would be headaches, any kind, any kind of problems with the head. The brain, brain tumors in Jesus' name, migraine headaches, headaches, problems with the nasal passages, allergies in the name of Jesus, man to go right now. God, I thank you for brand new ears, ears in Jesus' name, be healed right now. Deafness, go. Deaf and dumb spirit, get out now in Jesus' name. Right now, brand new hearing. Father, I thank you for vision. In the name of Jesus, eyes be healed. Vision be restored. In the name of Jesus, right now. Brand new, in Jesus' name. God, thank you for brand new necks. Brand new discs in the neck. Brand new muscles in the neck. In the name of Jesus. Brand new thyroid glands in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Any kind of problems in the throat, brand new voice boxes, anything at all having to do with the throat. Right now, in Jesus' name, be healed right now. Father, thank you for complete wholeness, 100%. In the trap area or in the shoulder area, in the name of Jesus, right now. Traps, be healed. Rotator cuffs be made whole right now in Jesus' name. Brand new. Right now in Jesus' name. Shoulders. Brand new elbows. Brand new joints in the wrist in the name of Jesus. Carpal tunnel. Be healed in Jesus' name. Right now. Brand new. Be healed. Fingers. Every knuckle. Every joint. No matter what it is. Any kind of wrist issues that limited you from moving your wrist completely around. Father, I thank you that it would be removed right now. In Jesus' name. Numbness in the hands that have come from a neck. In the name of Jesus, right now. Numbness be gone in Jesus' name. Tingling in the fingers because of diabetes. In Jesus' name. Go right now. Pancreas healed. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now. Jesus' name. Brand new. Brand new, brand new lungs, brand new hearts, brand new organs. In the name of Jesus right now, 
brand new livers, brand new kidneys, brand new spleens, new urinary tract, bladder, fallen bladder, get up in Jesus' name right now. Father, thank you for complete wholeness. Kidney stones, chronic kidney stones, kidney disease in Jesus' name. Jesus' name right now, go. Be healed. Brand new. In Jesus' name, right now. Father, I thank you for complete wholeness, God. Brand new hips. In Jesus' name, hip be healed right now. Brand new hip socket be healed. Sciatic nerve be loosed. Brand new discs in the back. Herniated discs, perforated discs, bulging discs. In Jesus' name, be healed right now. Sciatic nerve damage, get out now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for a leg that's short, growing out right now, in Jesus' name. Whether it's been damaged by polio, no matter what it is, in the name of Jesus. If your leg is smaller, man, there's muscles to grow right now, in Jesus' name. Brand new, right now. Jesus' name. Brand new. Brand new ankles, brand new knees, brand new squishy stuff in your knee. Brand new ligaments, brand new tendons, brand new cartilage right now in Jesus. God, thank you for complete wholeness in the name of Jesus right now. Brand new, right now. Knees be healed. Jesus' name. Now, now. Jesus' name. Now, now, now. Jesus' name. Now, now. Brand new, right now. Jesus' name. Brand new ankles right now. Metal be removed from bodies in Jesus' name. No more rods, no more screws, no more pet, no more pins in the name of Jesus. Wire mesh be gone in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for a burning right where that metal was in Jesus' name. Right now, every metal plate be gone, be removed in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. Miracles in Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. <laughs> Yay. If, right now, I want you to check your body from head to toe. Right now, all over the house. No matter what it was. Knees, backs, necks. Just check. Check your shoulders. Check your wrists. Just check. It's amazing what God does. In just a couple of minutes. If you have breakthrough in your body physically, in any way, shape, or form, wave both hands over your head right now. Listen to me. I want you to check. I want you to take 20 seconds and check your body from head to toe. Something. If it was an ear, have somebody whisper. If there's change in your hearing, no matter what. I want 20 seconds. Check your body again. Physically from top to bottom. Check. Some, a lot will have to go to the doctor to get checked. But just check right now. you have change in your body wave both hands over your head right now that's more like it both come on Jesus 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 come on give Michelle I want you to put your hand on somebody right now. I want you to pray for somebody right now. Again. I want you to pray for all away from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet right now. Come on, body of Christ. We are the body of Christ, the fullness of Him that fills all in all. Come on. Pray for each other. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, God. More, more, more. Jesus, more. Come on, God. Jesus, healing, wholeness, miracles, signs, wonders, hearing, sight, organs, heart disease, asthma. Get out every bit 
in the name of Jesus right now. More. More, Lord. More, Lord. Come on, we're the body of Christ. Come on. You are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. This isn't Christ in Todd. It's Christ in us. The hope of glory. Jesus, more, more, more. Jesus, Jesus. Father, I thank you for a boldness for your bride. I thank you for massive breakthrough in every believer in this house. In the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to mark every believer. Father, I thank you that they would become the light of the world, like the Bible says. A light that lights up their own city, like the Bible says. And a light that lights up their own house, just like the Bible says. In the name of Jesus, God, I ask you to touch everybody here right now. Come, more, Holy Spirit, touch them. In Jesus' name, right now. God, we say yes to you. Jesus. 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 More. More. Okay, I want you to check your body again. All over the house. From top to bottom. Check right now. Use 10 seconds. 10. Nine, check. Eight, seven, six. Ankles, knees, five, three, two, one. If you have breakthrough in your body, wave both hands over your head. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We say we do another worship song. Can we do one more? All right. I want you to put everything that you are into focusing on Jesus and what he's just done and who he is. And I'm praying for God to impart to you the message that I shared today, that that would come upon your life and that everywhere you go, you would gospel everywhere you go. Would you guys be okay with that? Come on. Father, I thank you that you would impart through the message, I'm watching it all over the world. In the name of Jesus, in every believer in this house, watching live stream, in Jesus' name, I thank you for a ridiculous encounter with Holy Spirit. Father, I'm asking you to overwhelm them with your goodness, with your mercy, with your grace, with your passion, with your flame. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it. God, I thank you that you'd set people on fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. In Jesus. In Jesus' name. Come on. Do it. Bring it. Bring it. Come on. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, God. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. I don't know. Fire. <laughs> Jesus. Come on, everybody, just lift your hands and worship the Lord in this place. Jesus. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord, yeah. You are so great, God, so great.
I set a fire down in my soul that I can't explain, that I can't control. And I want more of you, God. And I want more of you, God. I set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Control. 